Hi everybody, I'm Diana from Sew Outside the Box. Welcome to today's video tutorial. We're gonna do a DIY mouse pad. It's useful and punny. Let's get sewing. Okay, so I'm gonna base my mouse pad just off of one sheet of eight and a half by 11 paper. I'm going to use the ruler to make a mark halfway on the paper across the top and then I'll make a mark on each side two and a half inches down from the top and then I'll connect the side lines to the top to make the triangular top of the house shape. And now I'm going to place my pattern on my folded piece of fabric and cut two house shapes from it. And I'm using a fat quarter for this project and a fat quarter works perfect and will also give me a little bit of fabric left over. And then I'll take my fabric piece and I'll lay it on top of two pieces of fusible fleece and I'll cut two shapes from that. I'm going to fuse each side of the house piece just to give it a lot more structure. And fusing is super easy. The glue side has a rough or sort of bumpy feel to it and you just lay the wrong side of the fabric onto the fusible part, which is the bumpy side, and then begin in the middle with your iron and hold the iron down, pressing, and pretty soon that fusible will be attached. I also have this um, Teflon pressing sheet that I sometimes use, I'm not totally sure about yet, but I do use it sometimes in case there's a gluey edge that you don't want that glue getting on your iron. And then repeat with the other side and you'll have two house shapes with fusible fleece attached to both sides. And then I set my fusible pieces aside. And now I'm going to work on tracing the mouse shape and the mouse house. And the one thing I wanna point out is the whiskers are very tiny pieces. So there's two ways to do it. We can totally make it manageable with these little tiny pieces, but you might need tweezers. Or you can not put the whiskers on and you can use the thread from your machine just to make little whiskers. But if you stick with me and this whisker part, I'll show you it's not as bad as it seems, even though the pieces are very, very small. And then go ahead and rough cut around the shapes. Leave uh, at least one eighth of an inch. You can get close, but leave a little edge around the shapes. Okay, now I'm going to attach my applique shapes to the back of the fabric. I just laid them out on the front part of the fabric, but I'm going to flip the fabric over and peel off the paper, and then I'll put the applique shape on the back of the fabric, and then I'll just hit it quickly with a hot iron. And then once all my shapes are ironed onto the back of the fabric, then I'll cut around the shape very carefully with my scissors. And then I'll be ready to use the appliques. Yeah, so as I was cutting out the shape and placing it onto the front of the mouse pad, I realized that I didn't really like the color of that mouse body. So I just quickly traced another one onto the fusible and chose another color. 
and I'm going to use that instead. And the reason I am just leaving that in the video is that this happens when I'm doing applique. Sometimes I think something's gonna work great and then I try it and it doesn't look as good as I wanted it to look. And so you can quickly regroup and just change it out. And that's part of the fun of applique. Here I am using my tweezers now to place the little whiskers. And they are pretty tiny. And as I place them, I realize that two look better than three. So I'm just gonna use two little whiskers. And then I like the placement of that, so I just use my hot iron to set it down on top of the applique and hold for about 10 seconds, and your applique will be stuck on the front of the little mouse house. Okay, now that it's all held down with the fusible, I'm going to just sew around it, and I'm not gonna be too fussy about it. So I'm using a zigzag stitch, I decreased the width, but I kept the length, and I'm just gonna sew around the whole outline. And you'll see when I get to the ears that I'm going to travel stitch, which means I'm not gonna lift my needle or break the thread. I'm just gonna re-sew over lines that I've already sewed, just so that I can outline all the pieces. It's just a really quick, easy way to get around all the applique and it ends up looking really cute. And you can see on the whiskers that I just go up zigzag, up the whisker. I turn the fabric around on the needle and then I just zigzag my way back down. Use a needle and bring your threads to the back, tie them off on the back, and then you're done. So layer the front and the back side, right sides together, and then I'll take it to the machine and sew around, and I'm gonna leave a nice little opening along the side. Now I'm gonna trim the corners on the diagonal. I'm gonna get nice and close to the seam line, but not through it. And I'm gonna trim the seam allowance down to about 1 8 of an inch, but don't trim the seam allowance on the side that the opening, where the opening is, because I need to turn that opening in on itself.
Okay, now it's right side out. You can see my corner presser tool right there. And I say it in every video, but if you don't have one, get one. They're super handy. Now I tuck the opening in on itself and now I'll take it to the machine and I'll top stitch and the top stitch will just be one eighth of an inch around the edge and that will close up the opening. Okay, sewing friends, thanks for watching. Join me next week for another great sewing video. Please remember to like and subscribe.